Hello friends, my name is Kishan and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to talk about the Spring module is called Spring with JDBC that falls under the category Data Access Integration Module. Uh, while working with the database using plain old JDBC, it becomes difficult to write unnecessary code to handle exceptions. Opening and closing database connections etc. But a Spring JDBC framework takes care of all the low level details starting from is opening the connection, prepare and execute the SQL statement, process exceptions, handle transactions and finally close the connections. So what we have to do is just define connection parameters and specify the SQL statement to be executed and do the required work for each iteration while fetching data from the database. Uh, when we talk about the JDBC, then you may check JDBC API. All JDBC API throws SQL exception and that SQL exception is the checked exception because that is derived from the exception class. So when you use JDBC API, then uh, you need to handle the exception within the try catch or, or either you can declare the throws clause along with the method so this is one of the uh, overhead for a developer uh, whenever you use jdbc api then always you need to handle sql exception compiler will force you to handle this exception because this exception is a uh, checked exception but uh, most if you look into the i mean exception hierarchy of a spring framework a spring with jdbc uh, models framework then all exceptions throwing data access exceptions or uh, um, exception which might extend data access exceptions and these exceptions have made as runtime exceptions so compiler will not force you to handle these exceptions within the try catch block so SQL exception when we talk about then you always have to deal with the SQL exception when working with JDBC the exception is thrown in almost all methods but to get to the root of the problem is very difficult since SQL exception does not tell us much about the problem you need to get the I mean SQL error code and accordingly you need to customize uh, message even if you manage to get the problems out of SQL exception it will always be specific to the particular persistence mechanism Spring provides a hierarchy of exceptions that covers almost all kinds of exception that a database can throw. Example of these are like data integrity violation exception, permission denied data access exceptions, uh, cannot acquire lock exceptions etc. So these exceptions will give you the proper informative information. The other good thing about this exception is that they need, they need not to be caught, you don't need to handle within the try catch because these exceptions are, are unchecked exceptions or runtime exception no matter what persistence mechanism you use a spring always throws this ex exception so this exception does not depend on the database when we talk about the spring with jdbc then a spring uh, jdbc a spring with jdbc module has provided some template classes so most of the code for database access is repetitive opening connections, closing connections, a Spring creates templates that handles most of this repetitive code. The developer uses this template which does most of the work and just fill in the logic specific to the application. Developer does not have to worry about managing connections, exceptions. A Spring has template for various persistence framework such as plain JDBC, Hibernate, Avertise, Example of template like you have a JDBC template, Hibernate template, uh, you have a named parameter JDBC template, etc. Uh, no matter uh, what technology you are using, whenever you are going to interact with the uh, uh, RDBMS or database, then always you require some information to connect with the database, like uh, you require a data, uh, driver name database URL 
username, password, etc. So a spring requires the connection information to the persistence mechanism. This connection info is specified in the form of data source. The data source needs to be injected in the template. So here, as I said, you have a different template classes in Spring is JDBC like JDBC template, named parameter JDBC template, extra, etc. So while creating this template object, you need to supply the data source object to its constructor. The data source may also be created by the application server. The developer then uses JNDI to access the data source. So data source uh, you may use uh, in real project uh, when you work in any web based application then you might use some application server like JBoss, WebSphere etc. In that case basically we define a uh, JNDI and using that JNDI we make the advantage of connection pool. So using like you have a Apache DBCP, using Apache DBCP of course you can uh, create your own connection pool right but uh, apache D and for that you don't require any application or web server but apache dbcp is not uh, recommended for the production environment if you want to use connection pool for production environment using jndi then you might go for the uh, application server like like uh, websphere jboss weblogic etc JDBC template. JDBC template is the one of the central class in Spring with JDBC module. Uh, JDBC template class execute uh, SQL queries, update statements, store procedure calls, perform iteration over result sets and extraction of return parameter values. It also catches JDBC exceptions and tra translate them to the generic more informative exceptions hierarchy defined in the uh, Spring DAW package. Instances of JDBC template class are thread shape. Once configured, so you can configure a single instance of JDBC template and then safely inject this share reference into multiple DAWs. So once you configure your JDBC template in your con Spring configuration file, then safely you can inject a JDBC template in uh, JDBC template object in your different DAW classes that we'll see in live demo project. Now, when you write any DAW layer API, then your API might return a custom object and uh, that may return a single or a collection of custom object. So if you work with the Spring with JDBC module or there you are using like JDBC template or named parameter JDBC template, in that case, your DAW class uh, has to, I mean, in that class, in that case, you need to create a, a mapper class and that mapper class you need to uh, pass some API which will return the custom object. Uh, suppose your DAW class is uh, like uh, employee DAW IMPL and employee DAW IMPL uh, has an API is called get employee by ID and that returns a employee instance. In that case, you might use some API which will take which will demand a row mapper objects. So there are certain steps to create a row mapper class like you need to create an employee row mapper which is going to implement this interface, row mapper interface. And this row mapper interface which belongs from the Spring framework which, uh, which contains one callback method is called map row which takes first parameter as a result set and second parameter is the row num itself. So next uh, series of video tutorial we are going to see how to make use of row mapper. And here are some API I have listed from a Spring with JDBC template. So I will discuss on this API uh, once I will done with the one demo project then we will go through this content. So, so guys that's all I, I wanted to cover in this video tutorial. If you like my video, please like and subscribe it. Thank you for watching my video and see you in next video tutorial.